You're listening to the Kick Your Boots Up podcast, where we swap stories of the West. Whether you're just waking up or getting in for the day, come on in and kick your boots up. Hi, everybody, and thanks for joining again for a special bonus episode here at WESA. We're so excited to be in, at the Dallas Market Center in Dallas, Texas. There's lots of things happening and going on, but really what you want to hear today on the podcast is none other than the director of the fashion show here at WESA, Mr. Carl Marshall. Carl, you're such a fun time. Thank you for <laughs> taking time to be out, out of your busy schedule, all the things you have to do to be here today. Thank you, Taylor. It means a lot, and thank you to Justo for having me come up today. I'm really excited. Oh, yeah, and I'm so excited to show uh, a little bit about what we got to see at the fashion show behind the scenes. I, I was there and getting to see kind of like a fly on the wall experience, and there's a lot to talk about there, but we can yeah. get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> we got we to gotta start at the very beginning, in the humble beginnings, I guess I should say. Right. So tell us a little bit about how you got started and, and how it all began for you. Well, thanks, and this is something I don't always talk about a lot, but it is part of how I got into it, because I do get that question quite a bit. A long time ago, we'll say 100 years ago, Uh, I was on the talent side as a model in the industry and was actually in these shows. Um, So I have an interesting perspective of what that feels like and looks like, which I think does help me in production. So started there. And of course, as you're aging out in the industry a little bit, it's like, where do those models go? Uh, I started to think about that. And so I turned to more the stylist side and the behind the camera side of what you see behind the wall, if you will. And uh, so fashion show and runway always intrigued me and I really enjoyed it myself. And so I wanted to get behind the scenes and get in there. So I got asked by a client once to do a show and I said, yes, going, what the heck? I don't know that I've ever done a show, but I've been on some. So I went for it and then that kind of started. And Dallas Market Center was a great client for me as a model. And I was asked by Dallas Market Center to produce a show years ago in the old apparel mark. And it just kind of went from there. And so I've been here ever since. And what a full circle moment. I mean, that's iconic. I've got to talk. I have so many questions just about that alone, because there's a lot of people in the industry that are starving models. They're there. They just want to be they want to make it. They want to get signed by an agency. They want to. And so the fact that you've been able to do it, you walked the walk quite literally. And then now you're able to come back and pour your wisdom as the director. What's that mean to you? What's that like? Yeah, great question. Um, Definitely felt very blessed that I got to do that that career. Uh, it took me all over the world, which was really the value for me, was getting to see this planet and all the different cultures and dynamics, which again, I think does help me as a producer make things a little different, if you will, when I'm styling out or producing a show, a little different perspective. But knowing how the model feels, I think is the biggest asset when they walk into the room and you know, they're people going through everything we are and just asking a lot of them in that moment, but knowing how to speak to them in their language and get in their head a little bit, because I've been there, I think does help, uh, you know, get the production across across that runway. Oh yeah, it really does. And I know I have a few more questions about you, but while we're on this topic, being there and being behind the scenes and seeing the way you you just commanded a room people just looked up to you they respect you they they knew that you were the boss man what you what you said went and everyone just did it your team included the models who some of them you've worked with before some of them were new um what's it like with the dynamic there working with uh, lots of different people because you've been on their side and now you know how to treat them what's what's that like yeah so First of all, I do appreciate the respect, and I actually, I don't think you were there when I said it, but I had never said that to the team, but I wanted them to know by team, I meant models, dressers, everybody, my staff, that I feel the respect, and that means so much to me that they do stop and and hone in, and really, I want to do that for them because I I know what it takes to get out there, and I want to get everything across to them. So same thing, even starting a little further back in with the Dallas Market Center, there's so much that that marketing team and the leadership here, Cindy Morris, really trust me and I don't take that lightly. They um, also mutual respect there that they trust me to do what I need to do for their industry. So starting with Market Center and then being so fortunate to have a team of people that have been with me for years, the stylists and the dressers, knowing the models, Dallas has an amazing pool of market and talent here for the models. And so that's fortunate for the Dallas Market Center that we do have a pool of really good models here in town. 
And you know, on along those same lines, they were so good. Professional behind the scenes, yeah. but then also professional on the runway. There were there were girls that would walk out there in higher heel boots, boots that I was like, <laughs> oh no, that's rocky, they're gonna break an ankle. They did it, they owned it. And even when they got to the end of the runway, that one final like money shot, yeah. they, they owned it. Every single one of them hit their mark. It went in if they were a few steps behind. It was so beautiful to see. It just all happened so, it was orchestrated or so organically. And I know it wasn't. I know there was a lot of planning and preparation. So talk about the planning and preparation because, wow, yeah. the, it shows that they've been practicing. So the, uh, the market center or market shows are an anomaly in the sense that a typical show that I do as well outside of the market center, we have sometimes a month to prepare. I'm in the store pulling or working with the designer. So we have time to really think about it, talk about it, fit the models, which we don't get to do here. A lot of people don't realize that we don't actually get to fit the outfits. They're samples, so we have to take into consideration it could not be quite cut to the exact production quality yet or sizing or the zippers or the buttons aren't quite there yet. So I always tell the models you have to try everything on right before we you know, go out there so we can know if there's an issue. But we do what we call a paper fit. That means I just know them from their composites and it has their stats, but I know them so well, I can usually gauge how it's going to fit on each body, although they're similar. There's little nuances like we all have about body types. So um, doing all of that really is a challenge, but they come in and they do stay composed. They There's a trust level, I think, where they know. That's why I always talk about it. Don't forget, your sample may not fit you like you would buy it, but we're going to make it work. My team of stylists are, again, amazing and will make it work. So what you guys get to see out there on the runway is a little bit of a masterpiece of an illusion of some tricks we've done behind the scenes with the garments. But typically with Western, I will say, things come out pretty true, a little bit more than the contemporary side. So it's kind of ready to go, we have found uh, in the wholesale industry anyway. Oh Run, yeah. Ready for the runway. And seeing just behind the scenes, the, all the models came out in line. It was all, it's all started so calm. Everyone was ready. They all had their first outfits on. And then once that happens, yes. once the show starts there, <laughs> it's crazy. But what, one thing that I really hung on to was there was really not much model tucking and clipping. And if it was, the clips were hidden. You couldn't see it. You couldn't, yeah. it was quite literally like it was custom. I, I mean, and just talk about the designs of the outfits in general. I mean, there were trends that were set where there was like a green fur with green metallic shorts, something that crazy that I would have never seen to wear and it worked. It worked beautifully. Well, thank and you, that so, means a lot. Yeah, thank let's talk about your team a little bit then because like, I mean, truly they were, they would look at an outfit and without hesitation, no blinking, no thinking, would grab an accessory to throw on someone or or the hats. They were really yeah. worried um, and really took into consideration the hat size of the models. Because again, sizes are, are yeah. everyone has a different head, right? Yes, and again, uh, what a lot of people don't know is I don't really have access to this product. So about a little less than 48 hours prior to that show, which, uh, call me crazy, but I kind of like it that way. As uh, so we come in as a team, I have worked the Dallas Market Center's marketing team. So we've done months of prep work about talking about what trends and uh, the theme and different things like that, that we want to talk about here while you guys are all here and the buyers are here. We want to make it important for you all and listen to you as well. But we do have a vision. And when I get here, I hope that the vision is in reality, that you, it's actually here in the showrooms. So I have either color blocked it. Sometimes that does help uh, us put form to the function. There is a base foundation to the production of a show that I go stick to the system, stick to the foundation, and then we can have fun with the design side of everything. Uh, so that does help. But I do tend to color block, and I do that because uh, to help the buyer because the buyers know their markets, they know their region or their small town or their big city or whatever they're doing. But I do try to help them. Oh, I didn't think about green to your point. You know, like maybe green would be fun to pull into the, my store this season. So I, tip, I, I do that on purpose. And even with the visuals behind them, if you notice, I kind of color matched what was happening on the big LED wall just to kind of drive home that idea again. Like this could be a strong color for you to think about putting in your store this season. And then luckily you guys are all great and have a lot of that to play with. <laughs> I was getting ready to say, I mean, if you have the vision, it's just so, it just so happens that we deliver. And yeah. so that's awesome. That's really, I mean, truly some of the looks, it, it would have, you would have thought that they were orchestrated months in advance. It had been a whole big well, production. I mean, every piece of accessory, I mean, there was tack. People were <laughs> yeah. walking out with, um, 
just, I mean, ropes on their shoulders, yeah. bridles, head stalls, breast collars. It was just so iconic to see, especially for this one. I bet it's a little bit more fun and different for you to have those extra pops to have. Yes. But then I guess fun. along those side, uh, along those same lines, a lot of people don't realize, you know, the amount of product that gets taken and delivered, and then also after the show, it's a mess and crazy, and now it has to be taken back to all these showrooms. Talk to us a little bit about the logistics yeah. behind the behind the scenes. I love that you're asking all the questions that people don't know about because they see that 30, 40 minute moment. Beautiful, and there's a perfect. lot go that goes into it. But we just finished wrapping up, we would call it, and everything is back. And I, well, my team and I were just talking, and just for the Western show alone, when we did the math of how many outfits walked out during the show, and then when you think about what was on that body, when you start counting the, the top and the bottom and the footwear and the bridle or the necklace, or you know, let's say there's five pieces on a body, you do the math and we had over a thousand pieces, articles of product in our room, in our possession for the 48 hours and that we got it all back with nothing missing. A, a, tr a lot to my team, of course, and just the system that we do. But, you know, we need to get it back up here to you all so you can have it to show your buyers and your customers. So we do our best to pull it out, you know, use it, get it back to you in good shape and, uh, and then not lose anything. So it always amazes me every market that I'm like, we didn't lose one thing or if we did for a minute, we find it. Like, we literally lost one little necklace for a minute and sure enough, there it was in a little box. And here it is, take it back to the showroom. So pretty impressive, my team, um, behind all that. That's a huge accomplishment. You <laughs> yeah. definitely need to give yourself a pat on the back there, because that's, I mean, after seeing, and, and having a little bit of a pageant experience, which is nothing near no, the amount it, that you do. Is, but seeing is. the chaos behind the scenes of, of quick changes, people throw things everywhere. And so, yeah, you've got to commend your team there, too. But then an, sure. another point, or something that I'd like to really hone in on, is the camaraderie between the models. I mean, even if they're kind of almost a little bit of actors and actresses a little bit, because even if they don't know each other, a lot of them probably do work together, see a lot of the same events. But even the models on stage, they have that smolder with each other. Or like right. when a guy's coming off and a girl's walking on, they have like that chemistry that the romanticizes what I think the buyers want to see. Yes, they they want to sure. see their, their clients wearing things. So tell us about that part of yeah, it, too. You hit it right on the money. When I'm with them, uh, that's part of that talk through. Again, we don't another thing with the market center shows is that we don't get to rehearse so what you're seeing is happening live in front of you i'm giving i do a what i call a talk through rehearsal when i have my little whiteboard i don't know if you saw that and i'm kind of you know sketching out the runway and then saying this is how i want this to go this is the pattern this is how this works uh so that's all they get so once they're out there you know they're figuring it out as they go but they're they're good smart models and so i give them the direction and with western in particular I remind them, I go, this buyer is looking to have fun. They're just not, you know, this couture show that's straight out, the product is amazing, but they want to see it move and come alive. So I always tell them, I said, know your outfit before you go out there. Does it have pockets? Is it a big skirt that you can play with? You know, the guys are aligning. Is there, you know, the guys are always a big crowd pleaser, obviously, every time we can talk about that. <laughs> I know what to do. But a little eye candy for the ladies. But um, overall, it is them getting out of their head of being the model and just being more of a performer and making it fun for the audience to say, yeah, this could be you, this could be your customer, look how great this piece is. So when I get them out of that, their model head of just walking down and back and saying, no, we need to show the product. This is a buyer's show. It's different. We need this product to come alive. It's important to the exhibitor. It's important to the manufacturer, to everybody, the Dallas Market Center that you know we are here for a purpose and that really helps me actually produce the show is uh, i care and i have respect for what we do here and then it all can make sense we're not just putting on a pretty fashion show which is great that it comes off that way but we hope that the buyers it's informative and they're like oh i want that i want to run up to justin and order a whole bunch of that or you know whatever it is that's my goal at the end of the day. So when I hear those stories and feedback like i opened three new stores or i got a huge order off of my jacket being in the show, and then that makes my uh, producer's heart really happy. Oh, without a doubt. I'm sure it does in a, in a million ways. But one moment in particular, I remember um, a little, like, leading up before the, I mean, like, what, an hour before the show, you were kind of, um, your team was going through everything, and there was one model in particular, a male model, that had long hair. Yes. And a few of the looks, he had long hair. And then at some point in time, when he came out to start modeling some more equestrian-type clothing, he had a bun. It was yes. changed. And some of the girls were as well. I mean, they went from cowboy hats to no cowboy hats. 
talk about the, I mean, just the detail. I mean, yes. to, to worry about every strand of hair. Yeah. I mean. So we do, I mean, I try to script that as much as I can in notes. Uh, there's something amazing. I almost brought one. I should have brought it. And you may know of them. They're called, a, um, you, your guests are going to say, what is that? Why is that important? In production runway world, it's called a Margie bag. Oh. And a Margie bag is a clear bag that's hanging on every outfit in a show. And it has all these little compartments. And that's where we number it and it's where the structure and the foundation happens so we can put all the notes in there of what we would like to see happen and so that's where i'm messaging my vision of the moment to happen whether it happens every time or not we'll see but in general uh, the model is reading that so they're getting in their head oh i need to put my hair up or i need to keep this unbuttoned or buttoned and then the dresser is also thinking through that because that person's looking at it. And then by the time it gets to my lead stylist, they already know what to do, but then hopefully it's come to them pretty prepared so they can just tweak it, like you said, add something to it and send them out. Send them out, <laughs> exactly. And one thing too that I, I noticed you touched on a little bit earlier that I think is so important for everyone out there to understand is everyone here at WESA gets op an opportunity to throw something in the show. Absolutely. So it's, it's kind of one of those things that's fun to see what you're gonna get when yeah. you get there. And we do our very best, I will say, um, that show could be a, easily a three hour show and I don't think everybody wants to sit through that. If they were hungry, we want to get out of here, it's been a long day. But uh, that was a long show last night. That was 177 looks, which in that show is actually big. We're normally around 130, 140. So I was really pushing the models. We got it done in 44 minutes, if anybody was <laughs> timing it. Which you were. Really, I was, <laughs> because I wanted it under an hour for sure. But the Western group will stay and play and hang out and party, so that helped. But uh, yeah, so getting that all out there was a challenge, but um, we tried to spread the love and get everybody in the show that we can, but obviously we can't get everybody in the show or we'd all be here all night. That's true. It probably wouldn't be. We'd probably still be having the fashion show that's right, right now. That's right. We'd both be tied up for that. That's hilarious. Well, I know we're almost, almost out of time, but I really do want to hear your thoughts. I'm genuinely curious to not only see where the fashion trends for you personally, where you think are going in the Western industry in the future, but also maybe like some fashion world, I mean, in general and fashion show tips. I mean, what do you think is going to happen in 2024 and beyond? Yeah, that's good. And you know, it's funny. I get asked questions a lot about that. And it, I think your a personal style is so, it is so personal. So I'm not one Ooh. to quite go, oh, you should never wear that or you should only wear this. I'm a little bit more, I, I like self-expression. So you do you is kind of a little bit more how I drive in life with fashion in particular. But yes, I am hired to help, you know, drive some of the trends and things like that. So I would say what I, it, it Western in particular, the culture here, I have a lot of respect for the Western culture. Uh, when the Market Center sent me to NFR and the different places like that just to learn more about the culture, it was so important to me. I do have background with the dad who was a rodeo competitive guy and a cowboy, East Texas cowboy. So yes, he got the son that was like, I don't know where you came from, but uh, we were very close. But just having that respect in the culture, I think it helps me to produce that show because it is fun to be in the contemporary crazy uh, but there's a lot of respect here to how things are worn. And actually I see in the Western industry that there is a very, very particular way to wear things, which I do respect. And I try to do my best to show that on the runway. Again, we don't get to fit it. So the fits aren't always there the way a cowboy would really wear those jeans or a cowgirl would really wear something. But I'm, you know, we try to get it as close as we can. Uh, for the trend in general, I feel like we um, definitely live in a culture that's more fluid in general. I think that's going to, you're going to see that in the Western industry as well. And there's different regions, which I love. You know, I was thinking about you guys when you asked me. Uh, I was raised in El Paso, Texas, which, uh, you know, West Texas, and we were very pointy boots in El Paso. Uh, when I came to college out here in Weatherford College, a very small college, it's more of an ag school here in this region, uh, you didn't wear pointy-toed boots in that region. I learned about some other styles, more rounded toes and square toes, and I was like, oh, I thought every cowboy boot was a pointed toe because that's what my dad raised me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, you know, there are cultural regional changes, too, I think, in the Western industry where uh, I'm learning about that, and I see where that makes sense. I've seen the Western industry just get a little bit more flashy and more fun. Uh, I watch the CMAs just to see what they're doing there because I think that shows a little bit of that very elevated fashion forward. 
your Western feel, and generally when you cross over that rocker cowboy, that boho cowgirl, there's just so much in the Western industry. And then there's the working cowboy, right? And I have some friends that are involved in that, and I see that true working cowboy, and then it's a uniform, and they just need it to function for them and what they do. So I love that part of it too. And you guys cover all of it, obviously. You have the products that can cover that working cowboy, you know, to that fashionista, rocker, you know, cowgirl, and I love that. It's fun to watch. Well, thank you. I, I completely agree there. The product is awesome, and that's pro part of the reason probably that I love working at Justin is the diverse. You can have your cowgirl jeans and boots one day and then dress it up with a dress and some fashion Absolutely. boots another. So that's one of the things that I love. But I, I want to kind of go back a little bit. You mentioned that you grew up in El Paso, Texas, <laughs> yes. and that is near and dear to our hearts, having our factory in, in El Paso. I thought about that. Yeah, so yeah. I guess, I mean, you talked a little bit about the trends there, but what does it mean for you then to be kind of like a I, I don't want to say a homegrown man, but yeah. um, the state of Texas is your home. And it so is. do you think Texas it has is. their own fashion? I think so. You know, it's, I, I love that you brought up El Paso because those are my roots. And I remember as a little boy going to the big Justin store and that smell and the whole thing. And like, I'm going to get a new pair of boots, you know, like maybe every once a year or a couple of years, my dad would take me over and get me a new pair of boots. And I just love that memory of Justin in particular. And uh, I do think, you know, Texas, we love to be bigger than life. And, uh, and there's so much diversity in all of our regions, just in our one state. You, like I said, there's that West yes. Texas, Central, North, South, and every, it's all a little different the more you move around just the state of Texas that uh, you can see that expression change. But yet everybody comes together and I think learn from each other uh, and, and maybe take a little bit from each region and we'll mix it up. And we'll, and I think it's done really well, and I love being a part of it. Oh, I do too, completely. And one last question before we go. Yeah. I know you have so many things to do, but you mentioned earlier that you color block the show. You, you yes. kind of have like a power color or maybe a few power col colors. What do you think is a good color for 2024? I'll tell you what I really enjoyed watching come down the runway last night, and it was green. And actually, you kind of are right on trend right now with that. I just thought the green was really fresh and just had a fun color. Uh, I know Texas women t tend to love brights as well. I love sequins in the show for sure, and I love when the woman's like, yeah, I'm doing that. Uh, I think that's a good call. But green is just, uh, I think, kind of a fun color because we know blue. Obviously, we know blue. We know black, right? Yeah. Uh, red is a strong color in the Western industry. Uh, so I just thought, why not green? And so I just think the sh you know, tones of green are just a fun new addition for uh, anybody, male or female, to kind of add to their wardrobe for the next season or their new their store. You know, like, add some green in it. I, I love that. I'm a green fan myself, but I, I love seeing there was a green hat, a green yeah. fur. I, mean, I love green, that green everything. Hat. And then to be able to pair it with the green Clara here at Justin, or I know there's like several men's Western um, boots that have just a top, the shaft yes, be green. Yeah. So it's just like a little subtle hint of color right underneath the jean. That, that's really, I appreciate that you really honed in on the green aspect and, and that you took the colors in every detail Indeed. into, consider, into consideration. That so, was fun. Carl, thank you so much you for guys. being here. Thank it has Justin. been so fun. I, we could talk for days, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> um, but thank you for the hospitality just at the fashion show, and thank you for everything that you're doing in the industry, too. It's really made a difference. That. I appreciate it. Thank you for your time, Taylor, and thank you for inviting me in, Justin Boots. It was great to see you all. It always is. And I know January, we'll all be back together again for the really big show. Can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> thank you.